Alright. Um, we can do that. Like the last one. Okay. Grab their food. You don't get too many potato chip bags over there. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Love those tripods. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, quiet. I guess I'm going to start. I'm going to introduce you. Good at this stuff, but if I see a green light, I figure I'm going to... Green light. Good afternoon. Welcome. I'm Robert Klein, Vice Chancellor for Academic and Student Affairs. And always want to thank the uh, health system that helps uh, fund the food you're eating. And uh, it's uh, a nice partnership where university side and health system side get to sit next to each other and hopefully uh, do some exchange uh, networking and other good things. So thank you all for being here. This is the third campus-wide leadership series presentation of the year. So we're halfway point. I'd like to extend a special welcome to our colleagues who are watching online. So we have a whole bunch of people that you don't see. Speak, you speak into it. I'm pleased to introduce our guest speaker. He insisted on a very short introduction. So what we have. Or every never providing his wish. I know the H E B rooms have them. But I've never seen them in yeah, action. This is my first time to see them in action. Anyway, Wesley Hamilton is the founder of the Disabled But Not Really Foundation. He's an award-winning adaptive athlete and motivational speaker. This philanthropist is on a mission and won't let anything stop him. Hamilton wants those with disabilities to feel equally as empowered as he has become. The title of Wesley's presentation is I Am. And please join me in welcoming Wesley Hamilton. <laughs> oh man, this is great. First of all, I never had a mic right here, so it's, it's, it sounds good to hear myself echoing to the back. So thank everybody for being here. Um, thank you for allowing me to come and talk to you. My goal today is not only to inspire and motivate you guys, but to breathe a little life into you as well. Man, so let's get started, right? <laughs> um, I am Wesley Hamilton, and I never knew who I was till I was in a wheelchair. I was born and raised in Kansas City, uh, east side of Kansas City to be exact. Walking out my door every day, I didn't know what success or opportunity was. So I allowed that to be instilled into my mind as I grew up. Well, when I was 24, actually, I turned 24 January 9, 2012. And at that time, I was working a full-time job. I mean, just trying to be a responsible adult. And I had just got sole custody of my daughter, Nevea, who was two at the time. So, you know, just trying to be a great parent. Well, several days after that, I was shot multiple times which I suffered a spinal cord injury. T11, T12 incomplete. When I woke up out of the hospital, well, when I woke up in a hospital, the doctor told me that I would never walk again. I mean, I sunk into depression. I mean, we all can be depressed over some things, but to hear that you would never use your legs anymore, man, it really, really did something for me into me. Like I was not only depressed, like I just wanted life to be over. If I could, I probably reacted that whole scene because I was only walking in my car. The guy that shot me, I never knew a day of my life. Um, never talked to, never looked at him wrong, anything. I was looking at a complete stranger. So in a hospital, I just wanted life to be over. I was different now. I didn't know what different really meant because I was always trying to be normal. I grew up in a, in a community where normal you meant that you had to fit in with everybody else. You thought normal was just like the person that was next to you. You didn't really want to be different. You didn't want to stand out. So that, as I became disabled now, 
I had that in my mind. I couldn't be different. I wanted to be normal. Well, I wasn't normal anymore. But I fought to be the same as everybody else. That put me in more depression. Um, on top of that, I was 230 pounds when I first got paralyzed. And being overweight was good walking. It was fine with me walking. But once I got paralyzed, it brought a lot of other issues. By the end of my first year, I was diagnosed with a pressure ulcer on my tailbone. And I didn't really know what that meant. I mean, I seen it, but I, was, I thought, OK, it's going to heal. Just another cut. A couple months into that, I was told that it had got to a stage four, and I had to be put on bed rest. Well, I was on bed rest for two years because I didn't know how to heal my body the right way. Being depressed only, only made it worse. I wasn't positive. I was negative. I looked at everybody, and I felt like it was their fault that I was in the position I was in. I couldn't embrace my reality, so it made things hard. And then on top of that, I was a single father, and how can you raise a little girl at that age when the only thing that you ever seen in life, you couldn't be anymore? I mean, I doubted everything that I could become. Man, just talking about my story, it gets me happy. <laughs> <laughs> because... That was only the process of what I had to go through. So let's say once I was told that it was at a stage four and I had to go through two years of bed rest, I, going into the last year, I asked the doctor, man, doc, what can I do to heal my body? Man, I got to do something. I, I mean, I got this little girl. I got to be more for her. Doctor told me something so simple and I could not believe it. Said, man, just add more protein to your diet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, you telling me that that quarter pounder with cheese, extra mac sauce is not enough protein? <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm eating all the meat I can. Well, I knew I had to make a change, and it wasn't just for me, but it was for that little girl. So I did the unthinkable. I grew up in, a, in an environment that, you know, going to school to do something out of the ordinary wasn't ordinary. Well, I knew I had to do something different, so I went to, I enrolled in Johnson County Community College and took up a dietitian course. I learned about nutrition on a different scale. And when I tell you, I got, became fascinated with it, I tell you the main thing that got me was when I seen how much sugar was in my Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I mean, I love Dr. Pepper. And they, and, they, and they showed it with the cubes. So it looked like a lot from a can to a 20 ounce. I was like, man, I gotta do something different. Well, I did. And even though I was in denial about the changes that my body was making, it was really making changes. And the only reason why I was in denial is because when I was walking, I could never make this change. Well, my last surgery was January 2015. The doctor told me, man, we got to weigh you first before we uh, go through surgery. And the only way that they could weigh me was in a hospital bed. To this day, that's the only way I get weighed. And... Um, when I got weighed, they said, hey, Wes, you're 135 pounds. And that was with clothes on. All right? So I'm telling you, I was excited. Like, So without these shoes and these clothes, I'm about 130, right? <laughs> At that moment, y'all, I believed that I could do anything. I could never lose weight walking. I mean, I tried, but it just I didn't have the will to do it. But being at your lowest is where you find the strength. And I found strength at the toughest times. And something came out of me that I had never seen myself even doing 
walking. When I tell you that today, I can say that I was paralyzed mentally while I was walking, I mean, that's, that's, that's not an understatement. Because when I, when I realized what I could do, as I was paralyzed, I became mentally free. <coughs> My possibilities became endless. Well, then I created the Disabled But Not Really Foundation. I had six weeks of healing in a hospital bed called a clinitron bed. Y'all might know what that is. And I, could, I had a different mindset, though. I went in, I was, I was happy, I had my own refrigerator in there, I, I was meal prepping, I had all this good food, and I just knew I, I, I wanted to bring value to other people in my position. The reason why I sunk into depression when I first got paralyzed is because everyone I ever seen with a disability was either depressed, overweight, I mean they gave up on life. So I gave up on life because I just thought that was the, the rule of the thumb. Well, then I changed the game, and I started to see there was more. I wanted to provide more for someone else. So I came up with the Disabled But Not Really Foundation. My goal was not to, basically, don't let your struggle be your identity. And my whole life's process, my struggle became my identity. From growing up on, in a community that I couldn't see success, I never thought I could be successful to being paralyzed. I let that define who I was. Well, now I was able to define myself. When I got out the hospital, I got into fitness and I fell in love with fitness the same way I fell in love with nutrition. And I became an adaptive athlete. What is an adaptive athlete? Me, okay? It's me. <laughs> well, now I compete nationwide in bodybuilding and CrossFit. Hold on, let me bring it back. You see that, right? You see that, right? <laughs> this is me, 2016 at a bodybuilding competition. And actually, it was 2017. I did two years of bodybuilding, but this is when I really had the different mindset of what I was doing. And it was great. So who is Wesley Hamilton? I am a father. This is me and my beautiful daughter that I always encourage every day to be a little bit more. Our conversation today was that different is good. <laughs> different is better than trying to fit in. But, but I, I'm also an adaptive athlete, speaker, game changer. I believe strongly in what I do now. And it's not, my position wasn't for me to be wasn't just for me, but it was for everyone else. Because I live a type of life that I can go back into the communities where I was brought up in and teach them something different. Teach them how to be more and not just be a product of your environment, but be more. And then I could also go to people with disabilities and show them more. My mindset changed, but it was only it, it would only be limited if I didn't constantly expand it. So I got into read and I started listening to podcasts. And I got a couple mentors that all you guys can actually listen to and reach out to because they're, they're, they're available for the world because I listen to everything they say and it speaks life to me. From Inky Johnson to Ray Dalio to Gary V to Jim Quick. Every morning I listen to something that they that they're putting out, and it motivates me. It helps me more and more be more. It gives me more value to my values. It allows me to figure out what my principles are. Man, but I couldn't do it just by someone that I never met, which I met Inky Johnson, so that was the best day of my life, I won't lie. <laughs> but I also started a 5.30 a.m. wake-up call which I call my mastermind group. And what we do is we bring people from different communities, different backgrounds, and we have a conversation. It's about 10 people. We talk about different topics. We got a book from Ray Dalio called Principles, and we break down every chapter. We listen to the How I Built This podcast by NPR, and we talk about how that person became successful and how you can be successful in what you're doing. The main point is like never give up. 
And that's what I believe is like I can never give up. So I think so strongly about it. My mastermind group is powerful because these are people that I can literally talk to every day. And they're from the communities that I'm from or they're from the area. There's nobody out of town. It's everybody locally. So it's, it's a great group. I highly recommend anyone to build your own mastermind group because to listen to people with different perspectives is good because sometimes the way you think is not, I mean, the way you think is probably a good thing, but just to listen to someone else and the way they think it could be, that y'all could combine that and your values have become stronger. Through my, through, through growth and my process, I have these style of leadership that I go by. These are my values. So I'm gonna break them down. Number one is change and growth. Who you see today, I won't be tomorrow. I'll be better. And I believe that with that value, I know that every day is another day that you can be a better version of yourself. So I never go with that mind that I'm going to be that same person. For 24 years, I was the same Wesley. Now today, the guy you see will be way better tomorrow. Open, being open-minded. I was closed-minded my whole life because I never knew what opportunity was. Now I'm open-minded to it. I listen to others. I allow people to speak and me, and I just listen. I get different perspectives from my mastermind group, and I actually put those values into mine. I learn from others, and I allow others to learn from me. But the only way I could do it was just being open-minded and strength. I mean, you see me, right? <laughs> my physical strength is nothing compared to my mental strength. I'm more powerful in the mind than I am in the body. And contribution. I wouldn't be here if I didn't believe that giving back was better than anything I ever did in my life. When I started the Disabled But Not Really Foundation, the only thing I could think about was bringing value to somebody else. Even though that I felt good about myself and I did something more than I ever believed that I could do, I was only thinking about somebody else. So we think about what is disabled but not really. Let's get to the fun part, right? <laughs> well, disabled but not really focuses on fitness and nutrition to help instill a physical limitless mindset that breeds courage, confidence, and competence to those with physical, mental, and emotional disabilities. We launched our first program this year which was called the Help Me Fit Challenge. Amazing eight week program. Um, the goal was to not only teach our participants functional fitness, nutrition, but also team them up with mentors. Let them be around a community of people just like themselves and feed off that energy. Because when you push yourself past the limits that you set mentally, you become unstoppable. Here go a couple pictures of just us and what we do. None of these people came in a program thinking that they could do something great. Now, they, they know they are great. It's amazing the change that they made. The pro, first program ends at the end of this month, so I'm, I'm, I'm loving the process. I'm loving the progress that they're, they're making, and majority of them wants to get back into fitness. I mean, it's, it's, it's crazy having a, I mean, we work with different disabilities, but majority of them right now is a uh, spinal cord injury and giving them the ability to doing something. Look at bench press. They didn't think they could bench press. They didn't think they had control to, to actually get there. Like, but with the right mindset, I've taught them that a lot of their restrictions are mental. And these are different levels. This is not just like myself, like T11, T12. The guy that you see right there in the black, he's actually a T6. I'm working with someone with a T3, and they're still capable of doing more. I have quadri quadriplegic <laughs> friends that do this, that are amazing. So your limitations are mental. You see that smell, right? <laughs> Not mine, not mine. 
Not mine, <laughs> but everybody else's. So another program that we do with Disabled But Not Really is called Hydrate the Homeless. When I believe in contribution, I believe in giving back. And it's not just for those of my own. Um, Hydrate the Homeless is an amazing program where it's not just about disabled but not really, but we bring other community leaders in and we do something for the greater good by giving back to those that are less fortunate. I mean, our, our, our program is amazing. What we do is we get bottles of water, protein bars, energy bars, the natural kind, <laughs> and care packages, hygiene. And what we do, we go out and we give it to our community because we want to see them live another day. Our, I mean, our program, has, we did about seven events, and it was amazing. So we're, 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 our goal is to plan on expanding more. This is what disabled but not really means. When I go out into communities and I can show people that we can give back I can help others that are battling and, over, and, and show them how to overcome the obstacles that at the moment they think are difficult and show them how it can be so simple. This is what I live for. This is my purpose. My purpose is not only to make myself look good, <laughs> but it's really about everybody else. And my daughter, man. She can't be more proud of the father that, she, that I have created because every day now I'm instilling something different for her. And we became a, a team. And now I'm, I'm breeding leadership qualities into her that she's going to be able to take with her as, as far as she wants to go. So, hey, uh, this is my contact information. Disabled but not really. I am Wesley Hamilton. Follow me, connect with me. You got any questions? I would love to talk to you. I mean, anything. I'm open for questions now. Uh, I got some magnets and some stickers over here if anybody wants some. <laughs> I'm just saying, so just letting y'all know. But um, yeah, take a picture of it if you don't want to uh, write it down. And yeah, follow me, reach out, and I'm open to questions. We got one in the back. Two things. One good thing, you're strong mentally and physically because your daughter's adorable and you're going to need that intimidation factor. <laughs> okay. Wow, right? Right. She's cute. Good luck with that. Um, and two, what is the next step? How is it you want to partner with the community or what? how do you want to take this to the next level? All right. So the next level. Right now we're, we're, we're figuring out how to come up with a curriculum that we can put into fitness centers everywhere. I believe that there should be a disabled but not really program any city that you go into. I, I, I believe that disabled but not really is going to impact not only the physical but the mental and emotional. And the goal is to go into every community and, and show them why it's so important. It's not that the population of people with disabilities is small because it's not. It's just that they don't have the courage to come out into society because they feel different. But what if we could teach everybody that different might be good and maybe normal is what's wrong. We breed all these communities together and we become one. That's my next step. I think you'll make it. I really do, because you, you have that passion. I think it's just a matter of getting connected with the people that can help build that platform for you. Oh, yeah. See, great. I love it. I love that advice, because that's, that's my goal, is to get in front of the right people. But I got to roll up to them. <laughs> hey, so I'm making everybody it Everybody wants a good pair of wheels, you know? Exactly, right? <laughs> Anybody else got questions? Oh, they coming. They coming with the box. Is it called a catch box? Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Great. All right. <laughs> Good job. Hi, Wesley. Nice presentation. So uh, thank you for that. My question to you is in regard to nutrition and one of the reasons why many um, 
underrepresented individuals in Kansas City, Kansas, and Kansas City, Missouri have uh, issues with health is because of how their meals are prepared. Have you thought about ways to um, incorporate healthy cooking, um, but still being able to make soul food or uh, spicy foods for the Latino population? So ways to make it taste good and still being able to enjoy it around family and friends. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so great question. Um, nutrition is my heart. It's where I'm at. So I had to go into different uh, ways of learning about it. Went vegan for about six months. You know, learning, learning that whole thing. Learning, uh, when you say like soul food, like I went to uh, Maryland and they actually had a soul food vegan restaurant. And it was amazing. I mean, I was there every day I was there. Like, I didn't want to eat nowhere else. And like all my friends, they were like, dude, where you get that food? I'm like, it's vegan. <laughs> But it was so good. Um, but on our board, we have a, another dietitian, and actually, she comes up with these plans. Um, I'm actually trying to team up with someone where we can do like uh, demos in the kitchen um, and start doing some videos with those as well. Um, just showing people what a healthy way of eating is, because you don't really have to give up all the things that you're eating now. You just got to do it differently. For me, I'm a fan of hot Cheetos, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I love hot chips. I'm just sorry. I'm sorry. Like, I try my best to not eat them. But once a week, once a week, once a week. I will eat them. And, but I'm, I'm still in shape. I'm still, you know, because of the way I eat. You know, I know that my breakfast, I have to make sure it's good. Um, I cook. Maybe that's my, maybe one thing why I'm pretty healthy now is because I cook. I love cooking, and I try to teach people that when you can cook, you can make your food the way you want. You know how it's going to come. Mm -hmm. You know what type of seasonings you're putting in it. Um, but no, good question. Nutrition is like my main goal. When I, when I talk to the people in our program, and they're feeling good about the fitness, at the end we do a 30-minute talk, and it's normally about What's your nutrition like? How are you doing with your eating? Because you can do all the fitness you want, but you won't see the results without eating. And for me, I lost my weight eating because I was on bed rest, so I didn't do any fitness. And then once I got into fitness, that's when I fell in love with it. So I fell in love with nutrition first. So I believe that if we can teach everyone how to live a healthier life through the foods that they eat, this world would be happy. Yeah. I mean, it's just, that's it. Like, I'm happy because I feel good about myself. Yeah. You know, mental, physically, everything. But it's through eating. You know, you eat the right foods, you feel good in, in a day. You eat the wrong foods and you just, you, man, you like, man, look, I'm just ready to go to bed. You hor yeah. feel horrible. You just, it's a wrap, right? So, yeah, thank you for that question. Anybody else got a question? Is it my turn? <laughs> Hi, I'm Marla. How are you doing? I'm good. So I'm disabled, but not really. I'm pretending I can see, and I really can't. So I have a, a funny story to tell you, but then a question. The question's about your um, homeless outreach. Um, so I'm legally blind, can't see very well. And if I'm not using my cane and walking down the street, I have been almost run over by people in wheelchairs, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> Even when I try to stay to the right, I can't see your reaction. So, uh, manual's better than the little quiet electric ones. So it's 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 been pretty funny. I, I thought, what would the headline be? You know, uh, blind person use your cane. Person with wheels needs the space. So anyway, so uh, bicyclists too. And those are really quiet. Yes, so, yes. But anyway, so can you talk a little more about your um, the homeless project? With uh huh. Yeah. All right. So, like I was saying, how do I the homeless? Um, the goal was to just go out in the community and pass out water and protein bars. That was it. I took the the concept from a family member of mine that was doing it in Dallas. I thought it was amazing, so I packed my car full of water and I just drove down there. 
I was like, man, let me go down here. Well, when I got down there, one guy, one homeless guy spoke life into me. The things he said, I, I couldn't believe that I was hearing it from him. Mm -hmm. Maybe because the way I looked at him was a little different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it showed me that, man, I felt so good coming back home that we needed to start it here. Mm -hmm. So now it's about, I say about eight different people with different backgrounds. Um, couple of them got different brands or something like that. But we came together and we brought the people that follow us to come together as well. In the spring, we'll start the events back in the spring. Um, and it'll be on our website, disabledbutnotreally.org. It'll have a hydrate the homeless. It'll tell you like if you want to donate, mm -hmm. um, if you want to participate. It'll have the locations where we're going to be. Majority of the time, we, we meet up on 9th and uh, East 9th Street, where Restart KC is, and it's a park there. So we set up a table for those that want to come to us. Our goal is to go organically and not have them come to us, but come to where they are. Mm -hmm. So we go out and we get get out in the community. We have people pushing rolling, rolling coolers, and sometimes they get heavy because we fill it up with too much ice. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it's just it's just all about a community thing. You know, anybody can participate, whether you want to volunteer, you want to donate. All items, we can receive them all. Um, we don't restrict ourselves to it. We actually have talked to other organizations that do things for the homeless as well. So after our event was done in the summer, we had I probably had about 50 bottles, cases of water left, and I donated it to them. Mm -hmm. because of what they were doing. So everything that we do receive, we do find a way to give it to someone else. Um, we did a Thanksgiving event where everybody uh, made real food. We packaged it all together and we went out and passed it out like we would do water. And Christmas Eve, we did the same thing with Santa Claus hats. <laughs> and it was amazing. And we, gave, we just gifted the community with food. Actually, we packed up in a whole bus that day. It was about 20 people in one bus full of love and we just gave back hopefully that answers your question if you want to be involved come on down we we'll make sure we don't roll you over <laughs> <laughs> awesome yeah, i appreciate that i would not lead the group either um, right right so. <laughs> it's good though it's good at least we are aware right we got to be aware so. that's right that's right any other questions Ooh, can I toss? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wesley, I'm Sharayla. We met a couple of times in the community. Proud of you, man. You're doing great things. Um, I do have a question. Okay. And it really kind of spoke to me. I wrote it down. How did you create your mastermind group? How did you decide which people you know that you want to connect with that early in the morning every day? And then are there people that say, man, I want to be a part of that? And you're like, you're kind of too negative. I don't need you in my group. <laughs> so it's a two-part. I know I'm trying to wipe it off. It's a two-part two question. Number one, how did you choose your mastermind group? And then two, because I can see myself trying to put something like this together for myself to be encouraging, how do you tell people no? Oh, man, it's simple. You just don't reply back, right? <laughs> No, nah, so no, you can't go <laughs> this is the way we started it. Um, we came up with five questions, five real detailed questions. More or less, it was if I can go off the top of my head, it was you know, are you willing to uh, contribute to the conversation? Because even though we're going to be putting out information, we want you to put out some as well. You know, it's a, it, we don't want just a take, 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 but give and take. Um, another one was, you know, what is your style of leadership? How do you see yourself? You know, because if we're at five thirty in the morning, we don't need negativity, right? So we need to make sure that you're 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 trying to reach something. You know, are you a, are you an entrepreneur or trying to be one or just trying to be better as a person? And I think the best question that I had was. Um, Poor people, I think it was poor people, you know what, two seconds, let me pull it up. No, nah, because I got the questions and I, I want, I, 
Because it, I like that question. I believe that everybody can get there. So I'm going to pull it up for you. And I'm just going to read the last two questions that we had. Because, it, it, yeah, it was amazing. Okay, here we go. Poor people are, are essentially to blame for being poor. Successful people aren't primarily talented. They're just lucky. Mm. Um, and I wanted people to give me an explanation for both. The reason why was because the way you explain that question, your answer would determine if you're valuable for that call. Mm -hmm. I always thought that to be successful, you would have to be lucky. And then I seen something different. Mm -hmm. So my mindset changed. So I don't want anyone to think that, you know, success comes from, to those that are lucky but those that actually work hard. And then we have a nice thing and say, oh, we're trying to fill a few more spots. So if you're not selected, <laughs> we'll open it up again in 30 days and see who wants to do it. So it doesn't make them feel too bad. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that question. Anybody else? Anybody else? I think she was waiting. Oh gosh. Come on, pass the baton. Thank you. <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> um, would you talk about your workout routine? I am, I am fascinated by. Uh, I, I get winded walking up five stairs, so um, I, I would love to hear about what you what you do in the in the gym. All right. So since I do a mixture of bodybuilding and CrossFit, like my routine is just crazy. Um, I do a lot of. Uh, so I go to a regular gym, I do CrossFit three days a week, and then I go to, I do seven days a week working out. So even when I leave here, sometime today I'll be in the gym. Um, and I kind of do a mixture because I, I have to learn the machines, I have to learn, you know, my balance and things if I'm transferring, because it's always going to be someone that acts. Yeah. But my routine is really a push and pull type of routine. Whatever I do, I kind of go in with the mindset, okay, I'm going to do all pull workouts, and then the next day I do push. Mm -hmm. um, it just helps me mm -hmm. where I'm not going in like, oh, today is just chest and tricep day <laughs> or back and biceps, you know. Yeah. Um, instead, I go in with the mentality that I'm just going to do a little bit more. I believe in fitness being a lifestyle. So... With that mindset, even if I just went in with cardio for one day, I'm doing a little bit more than I did the days before. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I always tell people, you know, everybody's different, same way with nutrition. But you find, a, find something that works for you. And, you know, going in there, hey, ask questions if you don't, you're not familiar with certain things. But I didn't ask no questions. I just actually watched all the big guys do stuff. And I'm like, yeah, I could do that. I go in the next day. I wouldn't do the same day because they watched me. I was watching them the whole time. And they're like, oh, now he want to do what I do. So I pick a different time and go in. And I'm like, okay, let me try out what that guy was doing, you know. And, and that was how I learned. You know, I, I always I was a visual learner as I grew up. So um, learning that way, it just helped me. Um, and I think that that just knowing that it's a lifestyle, you're doing it for yourself. I believe that when you're trying to make a change, you have to, only way you're going to be dedicated to that change is when you're doing it for yourself. Mm -hmm. I grew up thinking I was going to change for everybody around me. And when I got in this position, I had to change for me, for my daughter. And that's what was important. So if uh, when it comes to fitness or nutrition, you know, you, you got to just do it for yourself. You have to be the change you wish to see. And it's in your body. It's in your community. Uh, and that's what I believe in. So, hey, so I got this quick thing, right? All right. Right. I'm on. I'm on I got the floor, right? All right. <laughs> so I want to hear more of your questions. I summed down my presentation. I just want to give you all just a, a pointer. So I summed down my presentation because my story is amazing. I know. I know. I know. I hear it a lot. I know it's amazing. I mean, because who I am today, I, I wasn't 20 at 24. And, you know, I'm, I'm fascinated with life. My life is amazing now. But it was just OK then. 
So I kind of leave more room for people that got questions because sometimes even being in this position, people want to know, like, man, why are you so happy? <laughs> you know, like I wake up every day happy, positive. There's not a day that I have a negative attitude. And, and, and with that being said, I know what negativity feels like. So if there's anything, any question, anybody that you know that might can learn from something that I can give you, then I want you to ask that question. You know, I, I always when I talk to kids, I always tell them, you know, don't hesitate to ask your question because I'm not calling y'all kids, <laughs> but don't hesitate to ask your question because it could be the answer that I'm giving for somebody else. You know, so I just want everybody to know, because I don't want to give everybody a long, boring presentation, but I want it to be more colorful. But I like to present myself. I like you to feed off of my energy. I don't really care about what's up here. I just wanted to show you a little something, something. But I care about what's in here. And everything that I have to provide comes from that right here. It's not, it's not anything more than that. I am who I am. Because I believe in myself. I know who I am. So when you know yourself and believe in yourself, you can do so much more, not only for yourself, but the people around you. And that's the impact that I make on everybody. So I just wanted to throw that out there. <laughs> but if anybody got a question, see, boom, got one, we got one. All right. <laughs> Hi, Wesley. Um, so I was going to ask, have you ever thought of maybe a way that you could possibly um, give back to SCI students or I'm sorry, SCI patients or people who have a spinal cord injury, like in the hospitals? Have you ever thought of maybe like having somebody outreach like, hey, you're a perfect candidate for, you know, wanting to do basically what, what you've done? So, you know, if anybody know anybody, <laughs> reach out to Disabled But Not Really. Um, go to the website. You know, you can just send me an email through there. Um, I constantly have people reach out to me every day. And I make it to everything that I say I'm going to go to. Because this is not about me. It's about someone else. If you can call me and say, hey, I got, I got, I got someone that really needs you. They need what you got. The thing is, if I had somebody like myself to come to me that day when I was told or that week after I was told that I was paralyzed, I probably would have looked at everything different. If I was told that I could be fit and I could, I could be more active, life probably would have been a lot easier. But I believe that the three years that I battled was only meant for me to battle so that I can not only talk to people, you know, and give them like a solution, but I'm talking to you from experience. I got friends right now that never even had a pressure ulcer and they're 18 years in, but their mindset's not the same. You know, and they're like, man, Wes, how did you get there? I'm still battling things because you haven't embraced your reality. And so, yeah, when it comes to people with SCI, like that, that's that's right there. That's that's my field. So if anyone ever have someone that, you know, you want me to go talk to, I do it all the time. I literally just got an email yesterday about someone at a hospital. Then they was just like, man, we, you know, need to go talk to them. A lot of our kids are going through a lot of things. A lot of youth are being shy. They're being paralyzed and they're thinking life is over. There's people with spinal cord injuries happen every day. So we know that. And um yeah, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. That's, that's my heart and soul to be able to talk to someone that's in my position and just give them a little bit more. Show them. When they see me roll in and I'm happy, most likely all the therapists or wherever I'm at, they're like, oh, that's Wes. You know, like, I'm like, oh, they're like, oh, you're a celebrity, huh? I'm like, I'm like, nah, man, I'm just happy about my life. So I'm going to show you how to be happy with yours. Don't look at yourself as being defeated, but find a way to overcome it. So, yeah. Hey, I got it. Thank you. There's a question all the way in the back. I see everybody. Don't be nervous. Yeah.
Hi, um, thank you Hello. for your presentation. Thank you. Um, I know you mentioned that you like listening to podcasts, and I recently, this is a comment, not really a question, I guess, um, but there's one called Speak Easy that I've become aware of recently, and it's about local um, entrepreneurs and people in Kansas City. Mm. And there was one that I listened to about Ruby Jean's Juicery, and I was just curious if you had heard about that, have, if you've checked it out yet. I haven't personally been able to go check it out, but it's on my list of places that I really want to go. And just some of the things that you said about nutrition, um, in the community, bringing people together, coming up with um, solutions that kind of still, you know, that balance of health, but also things that you like to eat. Those were kind of some of the themes that they talked about in that podcast with Ruby Jeans. Um, so I was just kind of curious if you'd heard about it. If not, you should totally check it out because it's on my list too. I love Ruby Jeans. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, Chris Good is a good friend of mine now and we've actually connected and hopefully we're going to try to do some things um, where I want to team up with a lot of local uh <laughs> health spots and actually figure out a way that we can team up to provide that nutrition part for disabled but not really in our, our candidates. Uh, but yeah, check it out. Um, it really, it, it really, it became more of my heart to go to Ruby Jeans, and especially when he did the unthinkable and set up an establishment on 30th and Truce. Right. And so for me, that was a very huge plus. Like, so I'm there all the time. I do my all my I do meetings there. I actually have an office down on 18th and Main at WeWork, so it's not far from there. So, yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I encourage you. They got vegan options, <laughs> <laughs> so I encourage you to go. Thank you. All right, we got a question over here. Let's bring 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 the box. Bring the box. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I, I really. You don't want to throw. You don't want to throw. <laughs> Yeah, right on. Uh, thanks again for your talk and, and for sharing your story with us. Uh, two questions. One might be a little quick. Who does your design and artwork? It's uh, I like it. Um, and then two, um, ha any tips for... Uh, many of, of us in this room may say, what you're doing is great. I love it. I'm so, I, I'd love to be a part of it, but I don't have time. Oh, man. Time? <laughs> talking about time? You talking about the 24 hours that we got in a day? <laughs> oh, man, look, you got to make time for what you want. And for me, I wake up at 5 o'clock in the morning, sometimes 4.30, because my natural clock gets me up earlier than what I want. But, um, man, it goes back to nutrition, honestly. Because the way I, 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 I feel and the energy that I have is from the food I'm putting in my body. It gives me the ability to have more time to do things. And man, when I tell you my day is full, like I do so much. Bef like when I have my 5.30 a.m. call, here's a tip for you. Our calls only last 40 minutes. So, you know, it's 30, 40 minutes max. We try to get off about 16 every morning because some people got to get ready. Some people are talking to us driving to work. But well, once I'm done with that, man, I'm, I'm packing my daughter's lunch. I'm cooking breakfast. I drop my daughter off at school every day. Mm -hmm. So then when I drop her off at school, I go straight to the office. Mm -hmm. I still work out every day. So I still find the time to work out. I have meetings, have board meetings. I, have, I speak a lot at different schools in different places. So, man, but the, the good part about it is I'm done by 5 p.m. so I could be a father to my daughter. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you manage your time, you figure out, you write a to-do list, figure out like, this is what I need to do today and get up early. Um, I think it was a quote that I love. It's, it says, um, leaders, legends, actually, legends either wake up at 5 a.m. or go to sleep at 5 a.m. And for me, when you can wake up at 5 a.m., you can get so much done before you actually get into the work day. Mm -hmm. That means you're not stressed. I, I, I reply back to all my emails at 5 a.m. I let them know I was up before them, you know. <laughs> and, and for me, that's good because the next, I don't have to worry about them until the next day unless it's something urgent. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think just figuring out and I, you know, sometimes, and then I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV, so that, that eliminates a lot. 
I rather listen to books, so I drive listening to books. So I'm always let me get let me get back. So I always get that type of motivation put into my mind. I'm gonna just go back to a couple. So uh, one of the podcasts that I recommend, even for you, man, is uh, Jim Quick. It's called Quick Brain. He gave you bite-sized brain hacks. I'm sound like his podcast, right? <laughs> but it's bite-sized brain hacks to help you in your day and it's called quick brain and uh, man it's only like 15 20 minutes max talks about how to get better sleep so you can have more energy talks about how to read better you know um, and talks about just life itself it's so many different episodes focus on things that we battle every day and even have one on time management and that's kind of like for me I just learn I figure out what works best and I get rid of the things that distract me, you know, social media. Mm -hmm. I make time for it, but I'm not going to let it distract me. You know, instead, I use it to empower and inspire instead of just really just feeding into it. So I think you just got to figure out what works for you. But literally, man, a to do list is important. So hopefully that helped. But seriously, man, if you could think of me being 5 a.m. to 5 p.m., my daughter goes to bed every day at 8, 8 p.m. So for three hours, we got our me time. You know, and sometimes I end up picking her up early. Sometimes she wants to go to the gym with me. You know, but every morning she asks me, you got some meetings today? You got something to do? Because that's what I'm doing every day. Mm -hmm. I, I even work on Saturdays and Sundays, man. <laughs> so, But it, I love what I do. Yeah. So I don't see it as work, you know, so. All right, any questions? Second question, art. Oh, design. artwork, right, man, I got you. Because <laughs> it's my friend, his name is Jasur, and I'm not, I don't think you're gonna be able to find Jasur, so I'm gonna give you the info. And then his company is uh, Cebu Cup, and it's S-I-B-U-O-K. -K. Okay. Okay. K-O-B. K O P. See, we, we're gonna we're gonna give it to you. Just come up here. I give it to you because he's awesome. He does all my all my artwork. He's he he makes things fun. Yeah. You know. So thank you, thank you. That's my that's my guy. All right, man. We we we're almost about to wrap it up. I see a great clock over here, but we got seven minutes left. I mean, we got time for some great questions. Who got them? <laughs> well, see, there we go. We got one over here. I'm going to pull out the questions. I'm going to pull them out. <laughs> Great presentation. Thank you for being here. Uh, you'd mentioned a conversation that you had with a physician being pretty memorable for, for protein. Uh, what other conversations have you had with healthcare providers that have been memorable? And what changes, if you had to do it all over again, uh, could clinicians make to have those conversations be more meaningful? Well, you know, to me... I was rejective to the information that was given at the beginning because, you know, um, I couldn't embrace it. You know, I think if, you know, just like the question I had right here, you know, about seeing if someone could come when someone actually <laughs> suffers an injury, you know, someone that they could relate to, someone that actually understands the situation and can say, hey, you got to listen to them. I think then your information will be that they're, 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 they're comprehended better. You know, they're, they'll be willing to listen. Um, but only thing I can remember, man, is the, the protein. The protein changed my life. I mean, because he was like, either you're going to figure out protein or you're going to have to go drink these insured drinks and you're going to get your protein that way. And the first time I drank one, I just spit it out. I'm like, ah, yeah. Now, I think it was mental. Because my grandma drunk them, and I'm like, I, I'm drinking, I'm drinking the same thing my grandma's drinking. Like, come on now, <laughs> this this can't be life, right? So I think that was what it was, man. But if I get some advice, I think it's just, man, you know, if you have an opportunity to bring someone outside to just relate to them, because you will tell them everything. I even learned about pressure ulcers. I was told to do pressure releases. I didn't do them. You know, I was told, you know, a lot of things that I just didn't listen to. One of the main things was because I was in denial about my situation. I thought I was going to walk again. 
soon. Like I believe that, you know, pushing yourself, you can get to where you want to be now. But at that point, I just thought I was going to wake up and walk. So for six months, I was in denial. I mean, every day. So that means anything that the physical therapist taught me, I ain't listen. You know, when you try to show me balance and bow and bladder, I ain't listen. So I literally had to go through a lot to learn. You know, but now I go back to them and say, man, I know everything you was telling me was right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it was one ear, one ear out the other, but now that I learned it, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. You, you, got, you got the right thing. So I just think, man, you just got to gotta find a way, whether it's videos, you know, like we're in a whole new network of uh, video and, you know, things like that. If you can find something and say, hey, man, look at this guy. You know, and it's even better if you can bring that person or know somebody that's in that community doing something amazing. Um, that's my best advice because I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I think more people engage into me when I go talk to them at the, at the early stages. And then when I leave, the therapists are sending me messages like, dude, now they're working hard. You know, so I think that I think I just know from experience that that's made a bigger impact than just anything else. Any more questions? Come on, come on. All right, we got one. Yeah, that's yeah. It. All right, there we go. Right on. I, I can't catch. So <laughs> y'all showing me something good right now, okay? That's why I chose fitness. Because it was sports, you know, but I, I don't do sports. <laughs> okay, I just have a question about um, people like you partner up with. Are you familiar with Eric Austin? I am. I was just wondering, have you guys, like, partnered to do anything? Because his, his story is kind of similar to yours as far as the gunshot wound, and he grew up on the east side of the Kansas City area. I was just wondering if you guys partnered together. So I've taught, I actually, Eric was probably one of the first people in the community that I reached out to when I was struggling. You know, just, just seeing him on social media and things. I'm like, dude, you're doing some pretty awesome stuff. So we have talked and tried to plan some things out. Um, we need to get our schedules together with that time management. <laughs> but I do plan on doing some great things with Eric as well as everyone else that's in the community that, you know, is in this situation. So thank you. Thank you. All right. We got a couple minutes left. Anybody else? Anybody? I seen your hand go up. I seen your hand. Was your hand going? No? No? I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> Anybody? All right. Well, listen. You guys have my information. Let me make sure I put it back over here. Hold on. Uh, that was just a nice picture of me. So, you know, I just wanted to show it again. But uh, I want to give my information again. Um, like I said, I got some cool magnets and stickers over here if anybody want one. But if not, just get my information. Reach out to me. Maybe it's a question you have in the future. Somebody you're working with. Please, please don't hesitate. I respond. All right. Thank you for having me.